Bubbles. Hello, Bubbles. Paper. Polarizer time. Trying to get this done fast. Before they're gone. Look at the red ink that got carried in the bubbles. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Especially since I don't have to keep my hand on the microscope since there's actual fluid movement going on moving the bubbles. Okay. Gel pen ink and bubbles good combo. I think we gotta mix colors next time we do this too. Uh, it looks like it pulled the gel pen ink much more readily than it pulled the uh, blue ballpoint pen ink. So I need to get like a mix pack of uh, gel pens. This is really cool though. Works with the uh, little plucks of the string sounds on the synth. Hey, Zora, we're looking at soap bubbles that absorbed a little bit of uh, gel pen ink. There you can see the bubble. To give you an idea of how far zoomed in we are, here is a thin piece of tissue paper. You can see the individual plant fibers in the tissue paper pretty well here. That looks really nice too. That looks really nice. The bubbles are in a different focal depth. But this is literally just a little tiny scrap of tissue paper that I drew a red line and a blue line on. You can see the red ink right there. And then put some foaming hand soap on top of. Okay, that's too much. This is doing better with just the bubbles here. So one thing that I could do is I could leach a little bit of distilled water underneath the cover slip to get some more movement going on now. I think we're going to try that. Because if I mess up the bubble pattern, I think some of those bubble patterns are going to remain dried on a different side of the slide. So let's put a little tiny bit of water under there. I got to move the polarizer to do this. So primary scene. bubbles. Let me nudge that drop of water closer to the cover slip. There we go. Oh, nice. Nice. That's the trick, is getting the bubbles moving. I 
Let's turn the Chroma King off. This looks nice enough without the crazy effects. Let's do the mirror effect to get the nice symmetry there. I really like that. I really, really like that. How zoomed in are we? We are at 100x magnification right now, so we're on a 10x objective. So when I say little bubbles, this is like one of those pump things that you pump the dense foam soap on your hands. That's the foam that we're looking at here. So these are tiny, tiny bubbles. Because I think I just showed. We're far enough zoomed in, that's what paper looks like. <laughs> Where you can see the plant fibers. Speaking of, I think we need to explore the paper some too. So let's go back to primary scene. The bubbles on top are such a cool thing. I wish I could have both in focus at the same time, but I would have to layer the two images with uh, pictures taken at different spots. Yeah, th I, I get a lot of stained glass vibes from certain things under the polarizers. And I've always loved stained glass. Favorite thing to do as a young, young kid, super bored in church, which is look at the uh, stained glass. <laughs> Make up imaginary stories for the things going on in the stained glass. Looked like four masks before. Yeah, so we can get some nice kind of mask. Wait, why is, is there a little red square? What's that little red square? What is that from? What is that red square? Oh, that is from an element that I had selected in OBS that was not getting broadcast. <laughs> I thought that I had like a burned out pixel on my uh, microscope camera from playing with the laser earlier. Glad it's not that. I was going to say that. Like, why would it burn out a single pixel? Shouldn't it burn out an entire row or column? There's where our red line was. Now it's partially dissolved. <laughs> Stained glass in Prague. Uh, I have no conceptualization of what the cathedrals look like in Prague. Uh, most of my time around fancy cathedrals was time spent in France. Uh, and Belgium. But, uh, one thing that I aim to bring back here sometime is one of our stream activities had previously been I would pop on the virtual reality goggles and we'd take requests for destinations to visit on Google Earth VR. Because a lot of places you could, like, go inside buildings and big landmarks and all that on there, too. And one of our stream friends recommended a uh, cathedral in Poland that was entirely underground, built in a salt mine with things sculpted into the salt. And it was amazing. It was really nice. Okay, let's try more bubble stuff now. other region in here. No motion over here. Oh, look at that dense bit of color right next to the bubbles. But I honestly did not expect the edges of the bubbles to come in this clearly. We've never gotten such a clear picture of bubbles as this. This is the best we've done yet. And I think it has to do with the extra small size of these bubbles from the foaming hand soap. There we go. There's the name of that. I, I, for the life of me, could not remember the name of that or a lot of the places that we visited. 
Hey, Actitect, welcome in. You see, we're looking at some bubbles right now. I'm definitely going to have to make a recording of some bubbles. For, uh... I was saying to Phosphor Visual that I wanted to give him some microscope stuff. I think that he in particular would put good use to the bubble stuff. With the, given that he already works with uh, fluid stuff. Yeah, what do you think Phosphor... <laughs> Who was it the... Like last week or the week before, we were calling you Phosphor A? <laughs> Phosphor A? <laughs> you want me to make you a bubble video to use? In any of your manipulations? Because when I give people microscope videos, I like to record them something unique that other people don't have. That way, if they use it in a project, it's not like someone else is going to see an element that they use show up in someone else's project. <laughs> yeah, the bubble stuff is nice. Uh... Yeah, I'll probably do some of these recordings uh, later tonight after I finish up with work stuff. Which one is that coming up? Schedule. Oh, I don't think I work super late tonight. That's nice. Yeah, today's essentially a half day for me. Starting in the early afternoon and done by six. You have to go through your photos and see if you took any with stained glass more focused on the graffiti oh yeah I would be interested so what happened to the red tint bubbles so those were in a different region of the slide let me go back over there you can see where all this ink is on the paper red tint bubbles would be right here but I introduced more water up there to try to get more bubble movement. And I think the introduction of water diluted the red ink too much. Now, there is space on this slide for me to do another one of these, and I can do way more ink on the paper to try to leach more ink onto the bubbles. So how's the beer bottling coming along? So... Uh, as of last night, I finally drank enough beer to have enough empty bottles. Uh, so I think I'm going to do bottling tomorrow. I can't promise I'll, if I'll be able to do bottling on stream or not. Bottling is a situation where I'm going to have my hands wet constantly. And I'm trying to do it in a reasonable amount of time because during the bottling process, you have the wart open to the air, where it's a, where it's then a contamination risk. So it needs to be done quickly and... That, I might be able to stream it. It might be kind of just like stream from the phone. Who, who knows? We'll see what I wind up doing. But the beer is ready to be bottled. This bottle right here is a bit that's separate from the fermenter with my sketchy airlock on there. It's not really an airlock. It needs to be able to burp gases through that rubber band. I had joked before that we might try a sip of this being uncarbonated at room temperature, but should essentially still be the same beer. Yeah, that one's in a Lagunitas bottle. Uh, the bottles that I like to bottle in, I tend to go for the short squat bottles like they do with the red stripe stuff in. So, I, that was what I was doing this weekend. I was drinking a 12 pack of red stripe to have my, my nice little short bottles <laughs> for bottling in. Okay. Let me close that. Whoa, I just looked at the other window. Did we get a raid that I missed? No, I guess we just have a good number of people hanging out this morning. Ugh. So. This morning. It's almost afternoon here now. So, I'm kind of thinking 
our last thing that we do is probably going to be another like this, but I want to use a lot more pen ink. So let's start uh, using the pen on a little piece of this tissue paper. We're going to do a whole bunch of red and blue on there. See if we can get a mixture of red bubbles, purple bubbles, and blue bubbles. I think that could be fun. And I think this means in the future we're going to need to experiment with uh, more gel pens, more tissue paper. And here's the thing, it has to be nice and flat. So I gotta trim this a little bit. The end's a little bit crinkled. Oh yeah, I'm reminded, we put a hole in this piece of tissue paper that's currently under there. Let's see if we can find the hole. Sharpies. Uh, I think I only have a black Sharpie handy, so I'm not using black ink right now because we're polarized, but when we aren't polarized, black ink might do pretty well. I normally have a lot more like pens and markers and ink, but I've been teaching online for the last year rather than in person, so I haven't been buying tons of markers and pens all the time. You'd be surprised at just how much money in a typical teaching year I would spend on markers, pens, and pencils. You'd be really surprised. There's where it's folded. We're going to back up one level, try and see if we can find the hole that I pierced in this tissue paper. Okay, so I drew an X. And I put it near the intersection of the X. The blue ink is like not there hardly at all. This right here, this was a blue line, this one. That over there is the red gel pen. This was the blue gel pen, uh, red, uh, sorry, blue ballpoint pen. But I do not see the hole that I pierced through the tissue paper. Unless that's it. Don't think that's it though. Okay, but either way, we're about to uh, cover this and some ink. Alcohol based ink like Sharpies works well. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, I have a dry erase marker over there, but I don't think that's going to work very well at all. It's a lot easier for me to get these fine little bits with a gel pen. Okay, we're gonna do a little zigzaggy ink, 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 ink. And right next to it, we're gonna try to do a ballpoint pen. Not nearly as much ink comes out of the ballpoint pen, but we're still going to give it a good shot here. Okay. You guys want to see what my little bit of tissue paper looks like before we put it on the slide and put bubbles on it? Here's what it looks like. <laughs> Just little squiggles on there. Okay, slide is right there. I have a different strategy in mind this time so this doesn't blow all over the place. Is I'm going to cut this slip long and wet one side of it. And I'm not going to breathe on the slide and lose my tissue paper. It would help if I put back up the thing we were looking at rather than looking at my face while I prepare a slide. There we go. Let's 
go here. Okay. Drop of water. Now, let me add bubbles to this. Be right back. <laughs> These are going to be really red. Hex filter's working great. Awesome to hear. Cover slip. That's a single. Good, good. Get ready, guys. I got a good feeling about this one. I got a real good feeling about this one. paper glowing those look nice you can see we're getting a little reflections of the brightly gl glowing paper showing on them and now That's cool. I like that a lot. I like that a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to be having a lot of fun with bubbles here in the near future. going on outside. Can you guys hear that on my microphone too? That is a chainsaw is what that is. <laughs> Genuinely so pretty. I agree. And welcome in Gigi. 
we stained some soap bubbles with some uh, gel pen ink on a little sheet of tissue paper here. There's the tissue paper. Ooh, that's a cool view too. A lot brighter, but let's try that. not as often as bubbles. Maybe we need to put a chainsaw under the microscope is what we need. Hey Audrey, thank you for that subscription. How are you? You like our soap bubble experiments we're doing here? That's tissue paper. Let me get back to where we were. I like how we have little chunks of ink floating around in the water now. You guys see those little blobs of ink in the water? That's really cool, a little bit of fluid movement there. Yeah, that's a little tiny bit of white tissue paper that I colored on with a red gel pen and a blue ballpoint pen. And then we put a uh, foaming hand soap on top of it. The bubbles have been the real prize of this, though. The bubbles have been looking real nice for us. Go back to this. Yeah. I really like that. Hmm. Yeah, going to have to make a video out of some of this stuff. We'll do one to send to Phosphor for uh, whatever manipulations he would like to do. And then I'll do a separate one on my own to upload to YouTube with some music or some poems like I do. Hello, hello, Raspberry. So glad you browse the science and technology. Yeah, you can often find some really cool things going on in science and technology. I found a couple cool things going on there before. Uh, it's one of those categories that I feel like, much like the music category, there's some need for some differentiation in there. Like just to make it easier to browse some of the topics. It feels like music needs its own DJ and radio station section. I think science and technology probably needs probably needs a coding section or a game dev type section because that is a lot of what goes on in there. And the ones that probably don't seem like they belong in there are the animal cams. They probably need an animal section on Twitch. <laughs> It's a Chrome plugin that you can use us uh, to filter certain Twitch tags. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Uh, I think I s maybe that was a post from you on Discord that I saw mentioning that. Maybe that was a post that I saw on Reddit. I forget which. My usual problem is I don't even know what tags I'm currently using. Am I using tags right now? I always forget if I've updated those or not. Ah, uh, it was a post on the Shrimp Discord. Yeah, that makes sense. But I'm one of those people that's guilty of not really browsing Twitch anymore. I was mentioning earlier the main way that I've been finding people has either just been through shoutouts, through Discord, or when I'm in a stream with a really niche interest, I just start clicking people's names to see who has followers that might be a streamer in there too. Like, if they like this that we're currently watching, they might do some interesting things themselves on stream. Yes, yeah, so you can link. Man, that's nice. 
Because what I dislike is I dislike that I don't feel like I have a category that fits what I do properly. I felt a little more comfortable when it said music and performing arts. Because I felt like I could categorize there's some music that I piped into the looper. And there was some performing art going on as I read poetry and whatnot. I know the people that do dance feel the same way about the need for a uh, category. I'm talking about them with the flow arts people too. Man, these bubbles. Fantastic. I might attempt another further uh, objective to go in a little bit further in. I think Twitch needs to promote channels in topics rather than random popular video games and just chatting. There is so much more. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, the whole reason that I ever first signed up to Twitch was first to be able to use dark mode on it because I had just been what I would do at this point in time was this is 2018 I think is I would typically finish up a tutoring session over at a local cafe and I live very close to these types of places so I was on foot and I'd often like to sit there and grade papers and work on things while listening to live music over at the cafe but then they would close uh, I would often be there late I'm a night owl I'd be there like at midnight when they would close I'd walk home and then I'm like, man, still doing my, I really want some nice live music. And students had recommended that I check out Twitch. And I did. Checked out Twitch's music section. And I quickly found people uh, playing classical guitar, uh, improvised guitar, and all that type of stuff. I come from a classical guitar background myself. And. Not that much l later, I started finding people playing the instruments that I was interested in uh, doing more with myself, which were synthesizers. And that's how I first started Twitch streaming, was like, oh, maybe I'll just boot up my synthesizer and try a little Twitch stream. The first stream was literally a super late night stream where I focused on just trying to have a nice mellow vibe with my water light and making like ocean noise ambient stuff with the this synthesizer here and occasionally mentioning a poem can we get some organic movement on the bubbles with water we can. It's going to dilute our colors, though. So let me... So there is a little problem with the framing of this slide that I'm not able to really show properly. But uh, let me see if I can make something work here real quick. Primary scene. Very happy that you do streaming. It always helps you focus on homework and feel safe. I'm glad that I give you that feeling. Okay, we might just be able to go to a different region and get some. I might also just be able to tap on the cover slip to cause them to reorganize. Let me try over here. Oh, right over here we have some nice flow going on. Let's try this mirrored. There we go. That's the bubbles flowing on their own. I was hoping we'd see them split and change in shape, but maybe we'll get some of that. Go down an octave with these strings. Let's go further down. Let's crank their volume. Let's give some extra verb. I 
might be a little too loud on that. And our, our loops and modular settings are very, very simple today. We just have a couple swells from the Moog on a loop. And then I just have plats in its inharmonic string model. Uh, getting triggered by the mini root 2S. Uh, we're doing a little stereo thing with the Q pass on the string sounds. And that's getting some Maris Mercury 7 verb. Hand foam. Yes. Uh, did I miss a comment there? Oh, hey, Grey Lark. I, I think I missed seeing you up there. I'm one of those people that when I look at chat, it's all organized by color of name. And if someone new pops in with the same color as someone's been chatting, I can lose track that someone new, new entered chat. <laughs> Now, I'm going to turn on a filter on this. <laughs> All right, let's see if this does anything interesting. Now, let me zero this other guy out. Be prepared. I'm about to add another filter. We'll see what this does. Someone give me an option, vertical or horizontal? What are you feeling? Someone tell me, vertical or horizontal? Hey, gerbil. We have a yes. Horizontal. All right, first one I got is for a horizontal. All right, here we go. Maybe I should have gone the other direction with the horizontal. We brought chat into it. Oh wait, did I give the filter to the wrong thing? I did. I gave that filter to the wrong thing. That wasn't what I meant to do. First I'll test what vertical looks like. Let me zero that one out. Zero that one out, sorry. I misclicked what I meant to try. Let me first try vertical with the mistaken version. Yeah, that is not what we're going to do. Because I meant to apply that to... Here we go. Zero these guys out again. Alright, now let's apply the horizontal filter that I was talking about. Too fast. Let's slow that down. Big dogs in the open set zone. Oh man, look at those subs dropping. Thank you, Oppo, for dropping the... We got some good people that got those too. No Pogo was just in here. Chan got one. She's been dropping subs in here before. Confucius got one. He was in here last time. I recognize Looney Bob's name. I think maybe he hangs out with Misty Stream. All right, let's reset that one to zero. Let's go vertical now. Where's our bubbles?
Why are the bubbles not lighting up so well? Okay, let me go back to primary scene for a second. Oh, because we're starting to drift over the paper. I'm going to roll backwards one notch. Get better view of bubbles. And we're going to try that again. Back to crazy scene. Now we're going to try the filter that I was going to try. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. This should loop over in a kind of cool way once the thing loops back on itself. Hey, Marty. Yeah, I like this. Especially with the bubbles changing in real time. So for anybody who's got here, we're looking at uh, hand soap bubbles that got uh, a little bit of gel pen ink in them because I put them on top of some tissue paper that I scribbled some red and blue ink on. Okay, I forgot on speed of four, this is going to take a while to loop back onto itself. So let's crank up the speed. And another sub over to Greylark. I know I'm missing comments over there. I see it was about uh, Mon Herc. Welcome in. I guess it's good evening to our German friends now. Mark, you guys are too generous with the subscriptions in here. I appreciate it a lot. And I'm going to remove that... Uh, transparency on here to give you guys back the natural beauty of the bubbles. So chroma key off. So this is what we've been looking at. Soap bubbles. They are obviously tiled in four quadrants on the screen. Now we're going to take a little look into the paper. I got to turn down the brightness. Oh. Look at the way the bubbles frame that. Closer. Man. I like that. <laughs> we have our second hype train here. God, I got some thank yous to do here real quick. So, Audrey subscribed. Thank you. Uh, Oppa was just dropping a sub bomb uh, gift everywhere. Thank you, and subscribe, uh, and a gift to Greylark. You can hear me fumbling for words here as I've been online for just a little bit. Oh, is today Earth Day? Is today Earth Day? It is. Happy Earth Day, everybody. What a wondrous place this Earth is. And what, we're, what we are seeing lit up there is very thin tissue paper polarized. You're seeing the individual plant fibers woven together. Something we've been a little bit obsessed with on this stream today. That I love the way it looks. Oh, again with the bubbles. So nice. So one thing that I have, why describe it when I think I know right where it is and I can pull this out? Let me grab a, uh, a large cubic zirconia lens that I have, because I think we might be able to do something fun putting this over the microscope's light source and diffracting some light. I think I know exactly where that is, so give me uh, 20 seconds. So, kind of funny, 
This actually came from Moogfest. <laughs> because there was a booth at Moogfest that was selling uh, glasses with cubic zirconia lenses cut like kaleidoscope diffraction. That were the most disorienting things to put on that I had ever seen. But I had a laser pointer with me, and when I tried the laser pointer through the cubic zirconia lens, like, this is amazing. And then I held it up to my cell phone camera, I was like, this is even more amazing. So, this is what I'm talking about. I'll hold it up to this camera here real quick. You'll see what it does. I think that we're gonna I think we're gonna have some fun things to do trying to diffract light through the microscope lamp source. But first I wanna try something. First I wanna try this. So real quick, we're gonna turn off that source. We're gonna switch which virtual camera we're doing. Oh no, backwards, forwards, off, backwards, forwards. We're going to go over here. Let me see if I can do this. This will take some reaching on my part. <laughs> it worked. It worked. <laughs> Normally we just go <sighs> like that. <gasps> but all the eyes. <laughs> Thank you for those bits. You guys know I love just goofing around. Okay. I'm going to attempt to put this on the microscope for a second. Uh, under the microscope is what I should say. So we're going to have our image disturbed for a moment. Don't worry, we'll come back to this. That, that slide has to sit too far down. I don't think we're going to be able to do anything good with that right now after the experiment off stream. It's harder to fit into that gap than I expected. Okay, so yeah, we'll have some more use for this thing in the future. I'm going to have to experiment with that. Uh, because I've got some very distinct ideas for what might get done with this. Now. Mm. Oh, have I finished my coffee? No. So... What I had initially planned for today is I made this whole plate of all these condiments, 
herbs, spices, and all that, that we've been putting under the microscope. But the two winners, the, sorry, there's been three winners so far today. The ketchup did amazing things polarized. Amazing things polarized. The shampoo did something really cool that I want to get able to uh, be able to polarize it up closer. Something that looked like uh, glitter launching up into space is the type of view that we got. But the biggest winner so far is the foaming hand soap bubbles with the tissue paper. This has been the best one of the day. Something we're going to be experimenting a lot more with, especially when we mirror it like this for the symmetry. Uh, hey Gotham, welcome in. Day is pretty uh, good here. You can see we're looking at some soap bubbles under the microscope. Now, we're probably going to be entering our wrap up relatively. What is that? What's that little bit of bright red in there? Is that a chunk of ink that broke off the paper? Normal view. Forgot the microscope's off in the normal view. Look at that. I think that we have a rogue chunk of ink that is broken off. That's such a vivid red, though. Now we to enhance. Well, we can digital zoom that. I can't take the... Uh... So when I have the polarizing film over the microscope slide, it's... It's not very thick, but it's thick enough to where I can only use my lowest two objectives on it. So this is as far as the microscope can zoom, but the camera, on the other hand, can zoom in further. It's going to be a little grainy, though. But that's what I'm talking about. That's the uh, camera itself doing a digital zoom. Don't have an optical lens on there. That's one of the uh, possible upgrades in the future. Not the near future, but further out. Is a camera mount for the microscope and a proper camera put on it rather than this USB camera that's on the microscope. But that is a uh, relatively expensive stream upgrade. So that one's probably not coming too soon at all. Yeah, or ink on a paper fiber. That's kind of what I was thinking is that's that's why I was saying broke off because I feel like the ink got absorbed into a chunk of something, probably the paper, and that broke off. Unless that's like some I mean, that has to be it. We never see anything that's that vivid red unless we've been using like red ink red paper. We have not messed with the laser with this. Oh no, I bumped it. digitally zoomed so we have a scroll bar again let me redo the microscope window so that we can get rid of the scroll bar that's why I don't like using that zoom too much is because the window capture on that microscope software is a little tedious with resizing it to get rid of these bars come on now come on Gotta like move it a couple pixels at a time. God. All right, lowering mouse sensitivity. I had it for a second. Oh. It's like disappearing there. Okay, we're gonna deal with that. Arrow keys. 
Can you uh, hold the size of a window and hit arrow keys to go up and down like that? So what I've done is I did a window capture of part of the microscope software. I'll show you what the microscope software looks like here. We might have some problems with some visual stuff here in a moment. Ah, ah. Great. Drug the window around. You're going to see me manipulate this a little bit here. Okay, what do we have? We got vertical. There. Then we got to do horizontal. I'll show you guys how this works at another time. Uh, still got a vertical line there. Try that a little closer. Morning, pineapple hoops. How are you doing? We're looking at some soap bubbles here as I try to resize my micro... There it is. Oh, God. Resizing my microscope window to try to get rid of that line again. All right, we're not going to do any more digital zooming from the camera this stream. There. Got it. <laughs> And there's our focus on those. So yeah, for those that just got here, we have tissue paper here and we have a raider coming in. Travi B24, welcome in friend. That is our tissue paper polarized. Over here, you can see the red colors from where we drew on it with red ink, and it's now dissolved into the soapy water. And it looks really cool with the bubbles. So welcome in, folks. Let me know what you were doing in your stream. I don't think I have you followed. So let me click your name here and toss you a follow. crank up our light again and mirror us to go back to the bubbles. Mirrored scene. Go back over this way for bubbles. Huh, look at those little paper fibers hanging out of the end. That's kind of fun. There's some bubbles. They've been fun to watch as they drift and merge. The sample's getting a little dry now. So we have a little scrap of tissue paper, and then I put some foaming hand soap on top, and we've been watching some of these bubbles. But let me, I was opening a tab here to give you a follow real quick. You said that you were doing games and art stuff. Excellent. I'm all about finding art streamers out there. Now, the main three things that I find myself into on Twitch are music, art, and science stuff. So, anybody that doesn't know me, I'm open set. Uh, we are usually using this microscope over here. Often, we're mirroring it, doing strange effects to it. You can get some pretty cool views, some pretty otherworldly views, although they originate on this world ourselves. Uh, sometimes we, sometimes we get a little extra crazy with what's going on with the microscope, like this. There's a lot of things that you can do with a microscope when you're using broadcasting software, <laughs> like uh, weird feedback scenes like this. <laughs> Mostly do your art stuff at night while the girlfriend's asleep. You can keep it quiet and chill. Tom Think showed me your stuff and a little... Oh, awesome. Yeah, I know what that's like at night. It's one of the reasons why I uh, 
when I originally started streaming, I was using my synthesizer only and not my guitars because I tend to be streaming very late at night and a synthesizer can get piped silently into an audio interface. Unlike my guitars. <laughs> so let's go back to our primary scene here. And I know if you came from Tom Thinks community, you're almost certainly good folks out there. Now, this is a cool little thing to see. We actually have little bits of uh, ink trapped between bubbles, possibly bonded to like uh, paper materials. But you can see that little scrap right there. Little chunk of ink free floating in there. What I think I am going to do is I think I'm going to introduce another drop of water to this to get the bubbles moving more once again. So let me cut brightness. Uh, we're going to unpolarize for a moment and I'm going to add another drop of water. There we are with the polarizing filter pulled off. You can see how dirty that water looks with all those inks and bits from the paper drying out. The paper looks a lot more like paper now, now that we're not polarized. Uh, I can't add a dab of ink like this. I would need to draw the ink onto an extra sheet of paper. I could add microbe water, but the microbes would just die from the soap if I had to guess. I added too much. I gotta mop up some of that moisture. Okay, ready to polarize again. A flatter polarizing film for this one, so it doesn't get wet. First we'll go over here, where we have these bubbles. Come on, polarizer, don't crush this. There we go. There we go. Let's mirror that. Let's turn off the weird effect. For a standard mirroring. If we get some bubble movement, it's gonna do it. Let's merge the mirrored copies. There we go. There we go. So which software am I using to animate the scene? This is all just OBS. That's the only thing I'm using here. Uh, there is an additional plugin with StreamFX. And uh, Pineapple Hoops, if you want any advice on it, you see an effect that I use that you want to try, just let me know, like on Discord or something, and I can tell you exactly how I'm doing what I do. You guys downloaded StreamFX? Yeah, so we just told someone in here earlier about StreamFX and the ability to use shaders in there, like the hexagon shader. Little demo. Here's our ever popular cat. He's in slow motion right now. But simulated dancer. We'll remove his VHS shader. And like the hexagon shader from StreamFX is really fun to play with. I'll change the size of the hexagons here. You can see what I mean. He's hexagon cat now. Change the borders around the hexagons. Small hexagons he turns into dot cat. There we go. Yeah, and I've been looking at some uh, other software options for visual effects. People had recommended Touch Designer a lot, uh, but one of the ones that I know that I have uh, at least two friends that are really knowledgeable, knowledgeable about is the Mad Magic Music Visualizer software. So when it comes closer to summertime and classes are out when I have more time to look at all this stuff, I might look into some uh, stuff of processing microscope through magic. 
we might have because what I especially uh, what especially appeals to me is mapping a MIDI controller to the parameters in the uh, effects software <laughs> because I hate having to click through menus to change parameters I'd much rather have a MIDI controller here with sliders and knobs to adjust on the fly yeah drone hands has been using magic exactly he's been getting some nice slow moving kaleidoscope things anybody that uh, knows drone hands probably recognizes from our scene that I am a drone hands fan uh, where is it? These guys. I gotta do the trick. I got. Whenever I pick up the drone cat, I need to do the trick. So let's prepare the trick. Because the drone cat is great for this. <laughs> got a little stutter in that one. We'll do that again. Too fun. Back to bubbles. Oh, we got a nice slow moving one right here. But I'll tell you guys, I've never been very good with uh, lots of different software suites, especially like video editing suites. Essentially all the editing that I do to perform any video that I upload, it's almost all done live in OBS, where I'd much rather just set up everything to record things in a take live and then upload. <laughs> Maybe use the video editor to <laughs> uh change the uh, speed at which something plays or something like that they're very very light editing like that <laughs> i never put the time into that but summertime is when i'll have time to do things god uh, we're on a condensed semester with the university students i believe their last day of class is the fifth is that two weeks from now lamp commander welcome Gonna go in lurk mode. Yeah, have a good afternoon. And yeah, I'll be stopping by your stream sometime when I catch you on. It's not that much longer before I need to... Oh, nice little bubble forming in there. It's not that much longer before I need to wrap up as well and find us a good sp person to raid. Uh... Yeah, we'll, we will have very good options for raid targets. I see we've got a lot of friends that are on. We're probably going to raid another Knowledge Fellowship person who is out cleaning up trash off the beach in Florida for Earth Day. Sounds like a great raid for Earth Day. So education streams are best uh, because free and don't have to take the tests. Yes. Uh, and over the summer, I've been it, tossing around the idea of maybe doing some educational type content too in my core areas, which is like calculus education. Might do that on Discord, might do that on Twitch. Not sure yet. So. Let's see. Do we have any que final questions here today or request to see any of the stuff that we've been doing before we get into our real wrap up and start uh, typing in raid commands and all that here. Ugh, I wish I'd had more evenings recently to do more of my evening streams. But I've been having to handle a lot of the work stuff on the later part of the day. And oftentimes if I'm getting done with work at 8, I'm usually not able to fully get out of work mode by midnight for streaming and all that. <laughs> It takes me a while to cook dinner, deal with stuff around the house, and then finally get in the right headspace. The daytime streams, I can be in a little more of the uh, semi-teacher headspace. 
nighttime streams I need to seer I need to more seriously chill out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for being here, uh, Mauve Marader. I keep on still Marader, Marauder, Marader, Marauder. Bubblegum Nihilus, thank you as well. Uh, chat vibes, glad you got to kid. Yes, thanks for being here, Pi Piney. I know last time we raided you, I knew that you were about to raid somewhere else. So like, eh, I'm struggling for raiders. I'm sure she'll find someone good to raid. Just hop over onto your raid train that night. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get our raid ready. I'm going to preview Dr. WD-40 stream to make sure he hasn't actually been on for a real long time. Sometimes he streams early in the morning. He's been on for two hours. Let me get past an ad to make sure it doesn't look like he's about to wrap up. Dr. WD-40 is a biologist down in South Florida. He tends to stream uh, outdoor stuff, going out birding, uh, metal detecting on the beach. Sounds like today's cleaning up uh, trash from the beach. He's been known to do a microscope stream or two every a rare occasion as well. So, uh, don't feel like you need to spam emotes and all that. He is streaming from the beach, so he is reading his chat off of a phone screen. So, no spam necessary. Let him know you're glad to be there. Happy Earth Day. So Happy Earth Day might be the appropriate raid call, but I've never been big into copy-pasting raid calls. Yes, thank you for being here, Lemonade, as well. Uh, like I was saying, I need to keep a lemon on reserve for next time you're ever here for a microscope stream because lemons look amazing under the microscope. We get great fluid movement when we compress a little bit of uh, that fruit between the cover slip and the slide. So let's type in our raid. that incorrectly and I'll see you guys over there in just a little bit here I'm gonna refresh uh, my beverage I'm gonna get uh, a little bit to eat and I'll be able to hang out for at least an hour before I need to get to proper work stuff so this has been another opens that stream here's your kangaroo and let's blast off over to the space coast of Florida all right catch you folks later